AK YouTube Live. Sorry, I almost forgot what I was saying. <laughs> and I'm uh, here and I'm going to show you how I made a birthday card really quickly with a cute little stamp set bundle from the current mini catalog, which is the January to April 20. Whoop, sorry. Whoop. And I thought I'd already muted it, but apparently I had not. So, um, which is the January to April 2024 mini catalog. Sorry, moving my uh, desk and screen and everything around a little bit. So hopefully we'll be a little more centered and hopefully a little bit straighter. So um, so it's a cute little card, a cute little bundle. Um, and it's one that's, it's supposed to be for more manly cards. This one's a pretty girly card that I made with it. And I thought it was kind of cute. And I'm actually gonna switch up today and I'm gonna make, um, do the paint brushes and things in different colors to turn it into something that's a little bit more masculine colors or typical masculine colors. So it just kind of, it's one of those that you can really um, make it be whatever colors you want it to be, whatever your favorite colors are or the recipient's favorite colors are. And uh, yeah, then you get a cute little card. It's really quick to put together and I'll show you how in just a minute. So, hey, Carol and Pam and Judy and Kelly and Barbara, thanks for joining today. Um, it's like I said, I can, I pretty much cased it right out of the catalog. There's one in the back that's similar. I changed the center a little bit, added a few extra pieces, but the basic design came right out of the catalog, which I love that Stampin' Up! has so many good um, little, I don't know, good cards for us to look at um, in the back of the catalog, well, all over in the catalog, so you can, you know, take your pick and take your pick your favorites and uh, use those. So, all right, so Trusty Tools is the name of the stamp set, the main one that we're using today, and this is it. it again, got sort of tools in it. it got some good uh, dad sentiments, a thank you, happy Father's Day, um, and then it's got an awesome set. The dies are fantastic with this bundle. Uh, the background, you'll see, I cut with this one, so this cuts the little pegboard look, and then this one that's a I don't know, it looks sort of, it's like a, a little toolbox, essentially. You can use the two of these together. So this one and this one. Oh, and you've got yourself a little toolbox that you can put tools in. Um, there's all sorts of tools that you can cut out. And again, some of these are stamped. Some of them are just, you know, like the power drill. You can use this and this. And I feel like there's one other piece to it. No, nope, maybe it's just this and this. And create your power tool. Um, so we've got a, the little tape measure. If you want to just cut out the tape measure, cut out the little circle and the tab that go with it. Is that the tab? The pushy thing that's on the front of the tape measure. And then uh, this actually fits right over the top of your tape measure. So if you don't want to have to actually stamp it and uh, die cut it, you can just create it. This piece and these create little snips. Um, so if you look in the catalog, you see them. So these are like the choppy part up here and these are the little handles for it. Um, snips is probably the wrong term, but you know, that's all I know it as the big scissors. <laughs> so, and then this actually fits over the end of the paintbrush. So you can actually do a paintbrush without having to stamp anything too. So it is a great uh, stamp and die set. Love that there are lots of little coordinating pieces and um, that so many of the pieces kind of you can mix and match and stamp them or not stamp them if you want to. So Hey, Carol, I see you're here from South Carolina, and Sherry, and Patricia, and Robin, and uh, Sally, and Marilyn, and Honeybee. Everybody, thanks for joining today. So again, this is the stamp set bundle. It's in the current mini catalog, um, so it'll be around for a little while through the end of April. Um, yeah. Then I did use, because I couldn't help it, because I love them all, one of the new online exclusive items. This was called Sweetly Scripted, and that is where the little birthday sentiment came from. So now technically I chopped off. It's got some little stringy ends on it, but when I did my die cutting, I cut it off. But I still liked that it was kind of scripty and connectedy and whatever. You know all the words. So this is a cool stamp set. Um, I made a card not too long ago with that happy anniversary on it. And it's, it's just really, it's a fun one to use. I love the long, you know, and I love that some of them are a little offset center like the save the date and thanks a million love it there that you can use them across the bottom of a card or you know however across the inside of a card whatever you want to use them for so um I see Mitzi is here as well and Karen and Joanne I'm glad you got the set and uh yeah this is kind of my first time really I've used it a little bit uh, back when we had the coordinating paper from celebration but then I I don't know, I set it aside and I kind of forgot about it because there were so many good things in the catalog. So, all right, let me get that out of the way. And then the last thing that I used on here is I did use this kind of medium-sized die from the Timeless Arrangements die. So that is where this um, die comes, die set comes from. There's a, bun a stamp set that goes with it. It's bundled in the annual catalog, but I didn't use anything from it other than the die set. So, uh, So there you go. Um, I did use the Timber 3D embossing folder for the background. I don't know how well it shows up here on, I'll 
kind of try to hold it up a little closer to the screen and tilt it hopefully just so so that you can see it's embossed on the background with the timber 3d embossing folder all right online exclusives they are finally here all the new ones and you all have been loving them i've been seeing some orders coming in so i'm glad you are as excited about them as i am so there's a whole bunch of new things this is just a very small sampling of the new items that are out there um, there's the zinnia the simply zine simply zinnia bundle and the flowering zinnia stand or stands <laughs> designer paper. Um, there's the embossing folder that goes with it. The coffee, the new Latte Love stamp set, and the A Little Latte Sweet is out there. Um, this beautiful Encircle in Nature is out there. The Ma Magnolia Mood stamp set bundles. So there's tons of new things. So go look. Go out to the online store. Uh, log into your Stampin' Up! account. Go out. Click on the menu button. Or if you don't have an account, you don't have to. But go out to the online store, stampinup.com. Click on menu. Go to online exclusives, and you'll see all the new things, all the things that are there already lots and lots of good new things today so all right let's get going on the card my original card was a top fold and it it, it was cut to four and a quarter by 11 and scored at five and a half here across the top so it opens like a tent kind of um, the card we're making today is going to be a regular side fold card. Uh, most of my card designs will work with either card base. This is just my preferred card base, so I tend to stick with that one. But I try to show you that you can use either one. So this one is actually cut to four and a quarter, or four and a quarter, <laughs> eight and a half long, five and a half scored at four and a quarter. So it's essentially a half sheet of uh, standard cardstock. So there you go. Um, all right. Did a couple things ahead of time. I went ahead and pre-embossed this again with a Timber 3D embossing folder. Um, card base is crumb cake. This panel is crumb cake, and we're just going to stick them together. And I do get questions occasionally about why I emboss a separate panel when I'm doing the entire card front like that. Um, just because I find it a challenge to get the um, card fronts lined up nicely inside an embossing folder and get it shoved through the die cutting machine and have everything come out straight and just how I want it. So I've discovered that if you just layer a piece of the exact same color cardstock right on top, um, nobody knows except, well, you and I, because we're here, um, but your recipient doesn't know that it's a, you know, two pieces and just glued together. So it looks like the card front was embossed. Um, when in fact, technically, the panel was, but the whole card front was not. All right, so use a little liquid glue to stick those two together. And then I have a piece, this is cut to about three and a half inches wide by five inches tall. And this is basic white cardstock. And I used this cute little die, which creates the pegboard from the Trusty Tools dies. And I actually cut it twice. So I put it down on the piece of paper, ran it through once, and then put it down a second time ran it through a second time. So it's pretty easy to do this one. Now, obviously, because my paper is a little bit narrower than my die was, if you wanna start out with a, a little wider piece of paper and then trim it down, you can do that. Or you can do what I did and just leave it hanging off the edge and run it through the die cutting machine. My only tip for doing this, if you're gonna do the five inch panel like I did, is when you start to line them up, um, this one is probably not quite as noticeable because I trimmed just a hair off the bottom of it. But when I started this, um, the first time I ran it through, I put the die up quite close to the top of the paper, more like this. And then as I got down to the bottom, I realized there was kind of a wide gap at the bottom, but wasn't really enough to put in a whole new row of dots. So what I did this time when I did it is I actually just gave it about, I don't know, that's maybe not quite a quarter of an inch, a little less than a quarter of an inch um, gap here at the top. So that allowed me then to run it through twice and it got a pretty even gap at the top and the bottom. So that's all is when you're playing with it, just make sure you kind of don't go up too close to the top like I did. I was almost right up at the top when I ran it through the first time and then it was too close. There was a big gap at the bottom. So that's my only tip for that. It's pretty easy. Just run it through twice and make sure you've got your little dye brush from the, that um, is part of the take your pick tool because you're going to need it for all the little dots. <laughs> they come out easily, but they just, you know, they just stick because they're little dots. So, all right. So we got that done. Let's grab some um, Stampin' Dimensionals. Now I do chop my Stampin' Dimensionals in half. So they fit nicely on here as little half dimensionals. If you prefer the minis, the minis will fit on here nicely as well. But um, I'll show you here quickly how I cut mine in half. So hey, Roberta, thanks for hopping in from 
um, Arkansas it looks like. All right, so just chop them right down the center of the row like that. So nothing too magical or exciting about the way that I cut them. Just cut them right down the middle. And I think this one will fit on here, even though it's a little wider. There we go. And then I made, just because this is kind of a, I don't know, a little bit of, I don't want to say floppy, because it's, I don't know, because it has holes in it, I felt like it wasn't quite as secure as a typical um, piece of cardstock would be sticking it to the card front. So I'm sticking a couple extra stampin' dimensional pieces under here um, to give it a little extra support. All right, let me put those back over here because I know that I will be hunting for them in a second. And we're just gonna take this and we're gonna stick it to the card front. Again, roughly centered top to bottom and side to side. Now it, it is a little bit off from a typical card front that I would do would be three and three quarters by five. And then it would have even borders all the way around the edges because this one is three and a half by five. It's the border is a little bit wider on the edges, but um, top to bottom, side to side, I tried to make it even on either side, if that makes sense. <laughs> but anyway, all right. Now let's do some stamping. I have got a piece of basic white cardstock and I need to get a total of one, two, three, four, five paint brushes done. So we're gonna stamp pecan pie, um, the little outline image from the paintbrush, um, which is in the trusty tool stamp set. And we're just gonna stamp it five times. It's very exciting. <laughs> so um, back and forth, kind of down this piece of basic white cardstock. There's the fourth one. And you know what I forgot is my chamois. Ooh, ooh. That I was not thinking about. We'll make it work. All right. I'm going to close that up before I stick my fingers in it. And then I'm going to grab, and I also didn't, ay, ay, ay. Hold on, I got to grab a block. I forgot to put the little paint swatch on. Apparently I was not very prepared today, so this is the one that I'm looking for. So that puts the little paint on the end of the paintbrush. That's what that little glob, that one is actually the paint on the end of the paintbrush. All right, so let's start here with uh, Balmy Blue. That's what we're gonna use today. Again, the colors I used originally were Fresh Freesia, uh, Bubble Bath, Lemon Lolly, uh, Balmy Blue, and Lost Lagoon. So I'm gonna change that up a little bit. So it's a little different color scheme that I'm using today because I wanted this one to be a little more masculine or a little more typical manly colors. So I've got balmy blue and I'm just gonna ink up the paintbrush handle, stamp it on my scrap paper, and then we are gonna line it up and stamp it here over the little paintbrush. And then we're gonna grab the little paint piece of it. And then we're gonna stamp that full strength down here at the bottom of the paintbrush. And if I had a chamois and I had gotten that set up ahead of time, I would be using the chamois to clean this. Instead, we're just gonna scrub it on the paper and I'm gonna try to go from uh, lightest to darkest so that hopefully I don't end up with something weirdly inked. But if we do, we'll just have some creative new colors. <laughs> so this is boho blue, which is the next one. Again, just gonna stamp it on my grid paper, flip it around here and stamp it over the top of my paintbrush handle. Whoop, that one I probably got, mm, not too crickety. And then we're just gonna go with a full strength of the little paint on the end of the paintbrush. And actually I'm gonna restamp that and get it down hopefully a little bit closer to the bottom of it. And there we go. One bonus of the photopolymer images is that you can kind of line it up and restamp it if you need to, like I did right there. All right, and we'll stamp that off a little bit. And then we've got Lost Lagoon as the next one. And we're just gonna ink up the handle, stamp it on scrap paper, and then stamp it over the handle here. There we go. And then same thing with the little splotch at the bottom. Hey, Judy, thanks for joining today. And whoop. I may have to stand up a second because these are starting to get a little bit, they're scooting up a little bit higher on the paper and I'm having a harder time seeing where I'm stamping. All right, and then we'll do Granny Apple Green as the next one. And ink that up. And stamp it on the scrap paper. And then we're just gonna line it up and stamp it here over the handle. And then same thing with the little paintbrush part at the bottom. 
lining it up, stamping it down. And then um, going on to Azure Afternoon is the final color. And gonna try to get as much of that green off as I can before I go back to the blue. And stamping it on the scrap paper and then going back here to my basic white panel, trying to line it up. There we go. And then doing the little paintbrush watch as well. All right. So, oh, no worries, Daryl. I'm glad you're here. Uh, thanks for joining today. So, all right. So we've got our little paintbrushes all stamped. I'm going to grab my paintbrush die, which is this one. And I'm going to go die cut all these out. So it is going to take me a minute to do that. I'll keep hopping back in and throwing them on the, the um, table here. You are going to want to have either the die brush or the little pick end for when you do this die cutting because this little thing does actually cut out a little hole in it. And um, you will have, you'll have to pick those little holes out of there. So again, ask me how I know because, you know, I said spent a while picking all those little, out, little holes out. So hang on. I'll be right back. There's a little Azure Afternoon. And, and Granny Apple Green is next up. I need to poke that out of there. And apparently the dog is really interested in the die cutting. She's now over here. And of course my heat just turned on too. Lost Lagoon is that one. Balmy or boho blue is this one. And cutting the final one out here from balmy blue and poke that little bit out of there. And that definitely takes the longest of stamping and die cutting your little paint brushes. Once you have that done, the rest of it goes together pretty quickly. Let me grab some glue dots here. So it's sorry for the, the heat turn on. I guess it hasn't been on all day, so it didn't even occur to me that it was going to turn on. Of course, it waits until I go live, so hopefully it'll turn off here fairly soon. It's not that cold in the office, so all right. Hey, Karen, no problem. So we're going to start by putting a little brush up here at the top and I will show you when I was putting these together I essentially just kind of laid out my yeah I think we'll go with this one in here Lost Lagoon next since that one's sort of a little bit green um, I just kind of laid these out down the panels to have a general idea of where I wanted them to land so that I knew spacing wise about how much space to leave between each one and again, they don't have to be perfect, so they're all good. So, all right, I'm gonna take that and stick the Granny Apple Green one in. And then we'll grab the Lost Lagoon. Whoop. And I'm just using little glue dots here. If you prefer liquid glue, you can certainly use that. Uh, stamp and seal might be a little more challenging just because um, of this little end up here, but if you're really good at using stamp and seal, you could probably get it done too. But Liquid glue or um, glue dots will probably be best, in my opinion, to stick these together. And then the final one down here. All right, down here at the bottom. There we go. All right, so almost done with the card front. Let me grab my uh, linen thread here. I'm just gonna get a little piece of that. I'm almost at the end. So we're gonna tie up, 
kind of a loopier bow. Just do the little rabbit ears and pull the piece through. That's how I do my bows when they're kind of floating in midair like that. Um, I just tie a little bow with linen thread and we're gonna snip off the end here. And size-wise, I think that maybe we'll pull this end down just a little bit. And grab another glue dot and stick that down. And it can look kind of yucky, the glue dot, nobody's gonna see it and nobody will know that it's there but you and me. So we, the glue dot doesn't have to look perfect. Um, we're just sticking it to the card front so it stays put, that's the main thing. Then we're gonna stamp the sentiment and I grabbed uh, boho blue cardstock just because I knew the boho blue brush was gonna be around the area where I was gonna be putting this. And the last one I did, this is bubble bath so I kind of tried to coordinate it as well. And then we're going to grab the sentiment from the Sweetly Scripted stamp set. Again, this is one of the online exclusive items that's available to order today. And it's in a separate section of the online store out under the menu and then online exclusives. And you'll see it out there. Um, using Versamark ink to stamp it on the Boho Blue cardstock. There we go. And then I'm going to grab some white embossing powder. And the embossing powder, the basics, is actually sold out temporarily until, I guess it's not coming back till this fall. So just so you're aware, um, the white, clear, black um, embossing powder set that Stampin' Up! had uh, is, I don't know, I guess it's not coming back. They're, I think they're switching to a new manufacturer and it's taking a little longer than they thought. So hopefully it'll be back sometime soon. So, all right, we've got the embossing powder on it. Now we're going to Hit it with the heat tool. So the Stamp It Up heat tool has two settings on it. There's a level one setting for drying. So if you're doing something like um, uh, watercoloring and want to speed up the drying process a little bit, you can use the level one setting. It doesn't get quite as hot, but it's more like a hair dryer is what I would call it. And then there's the level two setting, which is for heat embossing, and it definitely gets much warmer and um, will burn your fingers. Well, actually the level one setting might might get a little warm too, but level two will definitely burn your fingers. So don't put, put them near the uh, um, heat tool when you're using it. So we're gonna turn that towards the project. And once it starts to get that shiny white, then you know it's done heat embossing and you wanna just keep it moving when you're doing the heat embossing so that you don't accidentally burn your embossing powder. Um, because yeah, it turns kind of icky and dull and brown usually if you burn it. So, although I find the metallics seem to burn for me a little bit easier than the, the white and the black and the um, clear do. So, all right. So, got uh, that done. I'm just gonna give it a second here to cool off because with embossing powder, you can actually smear the stamped image as well. Um, once you get it done, again, ask me how I know because I've done it. If you don't let it cool off just a second before you do anything with it. So I'm going to grab from the Timeless Arrangements uh, dies. Got the kind of medium size is what I'll call it, rectangle. And we are going to run this through the die cutting machine. So I'll be right back. set that aside and get it out of the way and then I'm going to adhere this to the card front with some stampin' dimensionals and I will put it kind of right around the the ribbon so ribbon the um, uh, linen thread ugh, ugh. <laughs> minute I lost myself so you got involved in vacuuming Karen well you know I knew I wish I, I, sh I need to vacuum but I wish I could say I got lost in vacuuming but I don't ugh. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to take a couple Stampin' Dimensionals and put them on the edges here. And then I'm also going to put a couple here on the card front right around my linen thread so that I know that the um, dimensionals don't land on top of the linen thread. That's the main thing I want to make sure of so that I don't get a weird lump in the sentiment. And then we're just going to stick that right here over the top of the paintbrush. And I probably went a little bit higher. I guess I did. Yeah, I went a little higher when I stuck this one on. But either way, if you want a little more of this paintbrush to show, just scoot it up a little. So last thing that I added were some of the adhesive backed cork rounds. And these are also in the mini catalog in with the same um, kind of near, the, I think they're near the trusty tools. Um, maybe not. 
Eh, no, they're not. They're in with a different suite, but I think they work with the tools, so that's why I used them. <laughs> so I'm going to take one of the large ones and one of the small ones, and we're going to just stick it here on the near the sentiment on the little paintbrush handle. Uh, these are currently on back order, but they are supposed to be back shortly. I feel like it's the 11th or something of May that these will be back in stock. So hopefully they'll be back in soon. And then inside, kept it pretty simple. Just stamped the paintbrush image a couple of times. Whoop, almost dropped it. Um, so I got my pecan pie ink. Oh, thanks, Carol. And I appreciate that, Joan. So glad you're liking the card. And we're just going to stamp once down here at the bottom and then bring it back up here and kind of do a little sort of mimicking the, the front, but not quite. It's a little different, obviously. The layout's a little different and on the corner, but similar look. And then I think I'm gonna grab my two brighter colors here. And again, just stamp it off because I forgot my chamois. <laughs> it's, it's not even, you know, I didn't even put water on it right now. So it's dry and yeah, they wouldn't work at all. So, all right, Granny Apple Green. Stamping it here on the scrap paper and then lining it up and stamping it over my paintbrush image. Hopefully, there we go. And then stamp that off a couple times and then same thing with the little bit of um, paint here at the bottom of the paintbrush. Stamp that off a few times. And then we'll go to Azure Afternoon as the, the final color. And ink that up, stamp it on the scrap paper. Oop, it looks like I might not have gotten a very good inking on it the first time, there we go. And then we'll just stamp it over the paintbrush handle. And then again, doing this all with the little paintbrush bristles. And that's it for the inside of the card. So super, you're right, Karen, it's nature sweetness. I knew it was somewhere, yeah, somewhere in the back of the catalog, but I couldn't remember the name of the, the sweet. So, all right, thank you for sharing that. And then we've got a little stamp and seal. We are gonna stick this to the inside of the card. And there we go. I'm going to fold it closed. And because the card front is all embossed, I'm actually going to flip it over and do my crease ever so lightly on the back of the card, trying not to smash that embossing that's on the card front. And that's it. So super quick and easy. Um, like I said, a little more masculine or boy colors in my mind with this one and a little more girl colors in my mind on this one. So you can take your pick, which, you know, like I said, you can use really any colors you want on it. I wanted it to be a little bit brighter and look sort of rainbowy or is it ombre? I don't know, whatever. So wanted a little different look um, with the, the two cards and hopefully you like them both. Like I said, it's quick and easy to put it together. Um, a fun little stamp set to use. Love the paint brushes. Love all the images in it. So there we go. Don't forget it, online exclusives. Go take a peek at those today and get your orders put in. And uh, yeah, let me know if you have any questions. I'll be posting all the details for this on my blog tomorrow, which is stampwithamyk.com. And uh, I'll have the printable PDF tutorial and uh, all that stuff. And I'll link up to it here in the description of this video. So you can find that starting on Wednesday around eight o'clock in the morning, Eastern time. So have a wonderful rest of your day. I'll plan to be live around two o'clock Eastern time on Friday here on my YouTube channel. And then again, uh, next week, Tuesday around two o'clock Eastern time. And then I'll be in Houston at the Stampin' Up! on stage event for that next Friday. So I'll be out of town, um, but having a great time hanging out, looking at all the Stampin' Up! new goodies. <laughs> all right. Let me know if you have questions about anything. Thanks, everybody, for being here. I appreciate it. Have a great rest of your day, and we will chat soon.